Here in this video, I want to show you how to name alkanes. The ending A-N-E is going to be the common theme throughout the entire video, and all the molecules you see will have only single bonds throughout the molecule. In fact, alkanes, by definition, are an unbroken chain of carbon atoms, and they have to be single bonded in order for it to be an alkane. The way that you're going to name them is to assign a prefix according to the number of carbon atoms there in the chain. If it's a two carbon chain, the prefix will be F. If it's a five carbon chain, the prefix will be pent. A nine carbon chain, the prefix will be non. And you'll use ane at the end to tell people that it's all single bonds. So a six carbon chain that's all single bonded is hexane. This two carbon chain down at the bottom, two carbons, F, is ethane. And this chain, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons long, should be nonane. And it is. If you're not familiar with this type of molecular diagram, which is called a skeleton diagram, each corner, uh, these are corners, and endpoints that are unlabeled are carbon atoms by definition. So this endpoint is one, this is number two, this is number three, and on and on. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So that this last one over here is carbon nine. That's what makes it non-ane. Rings are going to be slightly different because you're going to attach cyclo in front of the prefix. Here we have, say, carbon one, two, three, four, five. This is carbon six in the chain. Seven, eight, nine, ten. This is ten carbons in one ring. The prefix for ten carbons was dec, D-E-C, and so we'll make it cyclo for the ring, dec, ane. See? Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a chain. They are in a ring, so it is cyclohexane, hex being the prefix for six. And this is a ring of five carbons, pent, that's cyclopentane. Pretty easy. It's exactly the same as the slide before, except if it's in a ring, you use cyclo in front. What gets more complicated is substituents, which are atoms and groups that are hanging off of the main chain. This chain here is one, two, three, four carbons long, so it's going to be a butane, because a four carbon chain by definition is but. But it has a fluorine atom hanging off carbon two. F as a hanger offer gets the prefix fluoro, and the way that we show this is to say two dash fluoro butane. The butane should be no surprise. It's a four carbon long chain. The fluoro is a substituent from this chart, and it's hanging off of carbon number two. We are going to give these substituents the lowest number possible. I could have called this carbon one, and carbon two, and carbon three, and carbon four, but then it would have been three fluorobutane, and we try to use the lowest numbers possible. So we chose two for two fluoro. Let's see, here's a carbon, that's carbon one, two, three, four. Uh, you know what, I don't think I started that properly because it's my two substituents are over here. I'm gonna call this carbon one, I'm gonna call this carbon two, I'm gonna call this middle one carbon three, and I'm gonna call this carbon four. It's still butane, but I have a fluoro hanging off carbon one and a chloro hanging off carbon one. It's going to be one chloro, one fluoro butane. We put the substituents in alphabetical order, ignoring di, tri, tetra, which you'll see on the next slide, but chloro goes before fluoro. That's how we decided to put them in this order. And what you'll notice is that there are always hyphens buttressing numbers and letters. In fact, this number here needed two hyphens to buttress it. This one 
applies to the chloro that follows it. This one applies to the fluoro that follows it. This carbon chain, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 4, has three fluoro substituents. Two of them are hanging off of carbon 2, and one of them is hanging off of carbon 3. That's 2, 2, 3 to show people which carbon atoms of the chain it's hanging off of. And we have to tell people that there are three fluorines, so we preface the prefix flora with tri. It's a trifluorobutane because there are three fluorine atoms hanging off, and they are hanging off carbons 2, 2, and 3 of the four carbon chain. You will have to memorize the prefixes that go with each of the numbers of substituents too, although many of them are probably not going to be a surprise, since a five carbon chain is pentane, and an eight carbon chain is octane, etc. Now, when you end up with, oh, I did not mean to do that. When you have a chain, or when you have a ring, you can pick any carbon you want to be carbon 1, but you'll want to minimize the numbers that you use when you're naming the substituents. Here we have two substituents hanging off the same carbon. I'm going to call it carbon 1, and I'm going to go clockwise from there. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I have uh, methyl groups, that's extra CH3s, hanging off carbons 1, 1, 3, and 5. If I'd have gone around the other way, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the numbers would have been exactly the same, and so we don't have to worry about there being another configuration that lets me use smaller numbers. And because there are four methyl groups, I'm going to have to use the prefix tetra. See, it's in the chart right here. Now there were six carbons total, so that's hexane, and they were in a ring, so that's cyclo. 1135 tetramethyl tells me what's connected to the main six carbon ringed chain. And again, ane emphasizes that they're all single bonds. Oh, huh, I don't know why that showed up. There we go. So let's name this together. I need to find the longest carbon chain, and then we need to name the substituents ourselves. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I go this way, seven, eight. If I go this way, I'll just go this way. And, oh, I guess I chose it to be the other way around before. Can I get rid of these markers? Erase all ink. Beautiful. Okay, so I chose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I should start here as carbon one as opposed to here because that gives me substituents on carbons two, three, and six as opposed to three, six, and seven. Lower numbers are better. So, what do we have here? We have an octane because they are eight. Uh, carbon atoms that are all single bonded together. I have a methyl group hanging off carbon 2, and I have an ethyl group hanging off of carbon 3. Now actually I have another methyl group hanging off of carbon 6, so that means we have a 2,6 dimethyl substituent. Now We'll put 3-ethyl before we put 2,6-dimethyl because the dyes get ignored when we're doing the alphabetization. But it is octane as we predicted, and the numbers are as we predicted as well. An ethyl group hanging off of carbon 3, and two methyl groups <clears throat> hanging off carbons 2 and 6. Yeah, nice. All right, don't know why I was doing that, but whatever. Let's number these carbons. What's the longest carbon chain we can find here? We should probably start at this side because it looks like it's more substituted on this side. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That will make it a non-ane. I have a methyl group here, a methyl group here, 
and an ethyl group here, which gives me 4 ethyl, because it's hanging off carbon 4. 2, 5, dimethyl again, hanging off the 9 carbon chain. And now together, let's draw the structure of this decane molecule. That means I need 10 carbons in a row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Try not to have little jogs in your diagram, but this is going to be okay. Now, on carbons 1, 1, 1, and 2, 2, I need 5 iodine atoms. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And all of these are eyes. The decanes have eyes. Get it? Man, this is irritating to draw on a MacBook. All right, then I have four methyl groups hanging off carbons 8, 8, 9, and 9. If this was carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's methyl, 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 and methyl. Let me remind you that if I don't write anything here, we know it's carbon. And methyl, being a one carbon chain, you're done. Then on carbon 5, I have a propyl group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A propyl group is a three carbon chain. That's methyl, ethyl, propyl. And this is my completed structure. Surely you can draw it cleaner, but I'm not going to. Let's draw one more. Cyclopentane. That's five carbons in a ring. Now I'm going to show my carbons here just to show you that you're allowed to do so. You don't have to draw everything as a skeleton. Carbons, carbons, carbons. Five carbons in a, in a ring. I've taken care of my cyclopentane. Now on carbon one, I have two methyl groups. That's a CH3 group here and a CH3 group here. La, 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 la. All right. On carbon 2, I have an ethyl group. That means a 2-carbon chain, which is actually CH2-CH3, because you can only fit 2 carbons on that middle carbon, and you can fit 3 on the end, or terminal carbon. Then on carbons 3 and 4, we need fluorine atoms. So I'm just going to crank a fluorine over here. I'm going to crank a fluorine over here. And we're done. Now, if you're wondering where the hydrogens go here, you don't usually have to show the hydrogens, but I will for you anyways. Every carbon needs four bonds total. Make sure none of your carbons have five bonds. Teachers hate seeing that. There's another hydrogen. And I need one more bond to this carbon here. And I'm done. Look at that. That's my cyclopentane for five carbons in a ring. Methyl groups, two of them, both on carbon one. An ethyl group on carbon two. And two fluorine groups, one on carbon three and one on carbon four. It's a beautiful thing, just like you are, my friend. Best of luck.